All right, so this is going to be the exa an example of a spec video. So a spec video basically is you take a product or an example of a product, reproduction, original, it doesn't really matter, and you you call out everything that's that's in it. So the only tool you really need for this is um, a measuring tape. And the sewing ones work best, obviously. So, this as an example of a, a spec video is, a, is an Arctis uh, chest rig made in uh, DPM. And yeah, we'll just begin. Okay, so this chest rig, this is a uh, pretty standard construction. It's two halves I can see that are folded up, bound around the edges here when it would be splayed open. And then the top is sewn appropriately in order to mate the two halves up. So the width right here, we're looking at like 25 and a quarter. And from the middle to the, uh, the top here, 10 and 3 quarter. Okay, the binding is 3 quarter inch, so it produces 3 eighths inch on each side. Make sure I'm still in frame here. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll stick with the back for now, I guess. So, uh, we got a, a box X stitch that's used to attach the um, the sh shoulder straps, and that has clearly been an operation that was performed through uh, the rig once it was sewn closed, because we can see that X on both sides. Um, okay, and there's two of them here. And it is seven and a half inches apart. Okay, the actual uh, shoulder straps. They use a piece of nominally two inch uh, webbing. This looks like um, uh, poly, poly instead of nylon. In this case, straps are from where they enter the rig. The padded portion is 18 and a half inches long and the one inch webbing is sewn with a, a V or a triangle shape there and from the edge of the pad we're going to say that comes out To be another 16 and a half inches, and it's probably uh, 17 and a quarter long, uh, including this extra fold over. And then whatever else goes up into the rig here, that triangle is one inch long, so presumably another at least an inch. This is a fabric that's wrapped over some sort of thin pad, and then the um, Two inch webbing is sewn to it as it's being assembled, folded up. Okay, so that takes care of the straps. We've got uh, a ladder lock style buckle here, one inch black, and probably three inches of webbing that uh, would capture that in the seam when this thing is sewn up. Okay, likewise. Uh, one inch, in this case, old school ITW Nexus SR25. This one's broken. Uh, maybe two inches there for the actual waist strap. Again, this could have been modified. Looks like we have a knot. But we're going to say that strap is... Do, do, do.
Probably 22 inches. I'd say 22 is pretty good there. Okay, so the the front of the rig. So we have a separate piece here. That's this uh, lid. Okay, the lid's not finished on the inside. This is a raw edge. The lid is seven inches. It's bound. In this case, uh, single sided. So this is the wrong side and that's the right side of the fabric. Sometimes these can be lined. And we've got a three eighths inch uh, snap fastener. So that's smaller than uh, North American and current spec for two and it's bound just to keep up uh, appearances. Okay, the rig's not lined at all. And some sort of nylon binding material here. Okay, so three, three magazine pouches on the front. So all identical, so we're only gonna measure one of them. But we'll take some dimensions here. So the front, the magazine pouches are 11 and 3 quarter inches from uh, extremity to extremity. Okay, this uses a, uh, a piece of nylon binding or webbing to clean up uh, where the uh, flaps are sewn onto the, the main, main uh, front of the rig. Okay, and the, the flaps themselves are four inches wide from where they meet that nylon piece. They are seven and three eighths long. The Velcro here is one and a quarter. That's an odd size, uh, by two and a half inches. And the length, yeah, two and a half inches is this uh, sort of reinforced section here. And it looks like it could be a separate piece. Yeah, I don't see any evidence of that folding over and being sewn up. The hem, I'm going to call it, it's about a half inch hem, so on each side. For the, the pouch itself, it's got something interface in here that feels like padding. Two rows of stitching to capture that, whatever's interface there. Um, in this case, I'm going to measure this entire piece because this is one, one piece of uh, fabric that has made all three of the actual pockets for the pouch. So we'll start on this side. So seven and a quarter to that first stitch line. That means we're expecting 14 and a half to the second stitch line, which we basically get. Plus or minus an eighth, you know, it's pretty standard sewing tolerance. And then 21 and three quarters, what we would expect for the third stitch line, and there it is. And 22 inches overall, plus whatever is folded underneath, which is another half inch on the left and right hand side. Okay. Depth of the pocket, I'm going to measure to these uh, pleats here. Okay, so that's six inches six inch depth to the pleat. And then I'm also gonna measure the length of this pleat. Okay, and that's that's a two inch pleat. Centered on here are some eyelets. Those eyelets are single piece construction. And they have dimensions of Yeah, like three-eighths of an inch. OK, 
Okay, so there's an eyelet in, centered in the bottom of each magazine pouch, and there's two on the uh, utility pouches that flank. What else can we say? Yeah, that's a one inch piece of uh, nylon that's been folded over, so it, it started longer uh, in order to, to cover uh, where the magazine pouch flaps attach. And all of this occurs three and a quarter inches down from the top of the rig. That's where this line of uh, magazine pouch flaps is. The Velcro here on the pouch body is five inches. And again, it's one and a quarter, which is an odd size for uh, Velcro in North America. On the utility pouches, I'm going to make the assumption that left and right are identical, although they will be um, not identical in terms of uh, there is a left and there is a right. So uh, the pattern would just be flipped over to produce the right one. But we'll focus on the left here. Okay, so the lid, the lid is a, a interesting shape. What I'm going to do to pattern this lid is I'm going to measure these pleats. I'm going to measure the, the length of the back. It's backed in some nylon here. And I'll measure the length of the front. And yeah, that's basically what we can do there. So the back is six inches. perimeter of this bound material here it's like 13 there's extra that's obviously folded and sewn okay we'll go to the actual pocket portion itself Slipped. Okay, so nine and three quarter there, plus extra that's folded under on each side. This has four inches of one and a quarter inch loop. Uh, that will stick up here. So these pleat things. Two and a half inches for that side, and yeah, two and a half inches for that side. Okay, we'll measure the bottom corner to corner, six inches there. These pleats in the bottom, one and a half. Okay, and we see that there's a raw edge here, but there is something that separates this pocket from a, uh, a flat pocket that's in the back and it's just a piece of uh, green nylon. Okay, and really that's basically it for this rig. And that is essentially what a, a call out video is. We've called out essentially all the dimensions that are required in order to have somebody produce patterns uh, to redo, to replicate this. The pattern production part is the, the time, time intensive part. Um, and so it definitely helps if the pouches are specific to a certain item, like a light machine gun box, uh, that that box should be available, or at least the dimensions of that box should be available so that that can be uh, replicated in foam. We have magazines of, uh, different calibers and sizes and, uh, yeah. That's a call-out video.